This is by far the most gratifying day of my governorship, by far. Governor Christie celebrating a landmark agreement, Washington keeping a close eye on hurricane recovery efforts, and Newark's Mayor Cory Booker says he needs more time. It's all ahead on NJ Today. Major funding for NJ Today provided in part by New Jersey manufacturers. New Jersey manufacturers, auto insurance and more for New Jersey Business and Industry Association members and their employees. New Jersey Association of Realtors, the voice for real estate in New Jersey. More information is online at njar.com. Verizon, communication solutions designed for the people and businesses of New Jersey. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. The Star Ledger and NJ.com. And by PSE&G, serving customers, strengthening the business community, and investing in New Jersey's future. Now stay tuned for NJ Today. From our satellite bureaus, our partners in newsrooms and on college campuses across the state, and from the production studios of Montclair State University, this is NJ Today with Mike Schneider. Hello, everybody. They said it couldn't be done, that it wouldn't be done, but Newark's teachers finally have a brand new contract. And today the governor joined with education officials and union leaders to celebrate what he is now calling a landmark agreement. Our David Cruz has the story. This is by far the most gratifying day of my governorship, by far. Governor Chris Christie waited mostly patiently while the other major players had their say about the groundbreaking labor contract that Newark teachers ratified this week. The deal, which includes the heretofore unheard of concept of merit pay for certain teachers, was celebrated today as a potential game changer for how these deals get done across the state and the country. The governor had a special message for the state's other and much larger teachers union, the New Jersey Education Association. This is where education in America is moving. And you can either be part of the difference or you can be run over by it. And I would be thrilled to have them be part of the difference, but I am not one bit reluctant to run them over with it. It will work either way. Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, which is the parent of the Newark local, said the process, while long and often contentious, showed what can be done when all involved keep their eyes on the bottom line. Make sure we do what we just saw in the classroom a couple floors up from us, kids who really care about their future and us really, really nourishing that so that they can reach their God-given potential and, this, and have the skills and knowledge they need, and that our democracy is better and better for it. But the deal, which also included retroactive pay for teachers and a say in the evaluation process of their peers, did not sit well with many teachers who felt the union sold them out for some merit pay. Longtime union boss Joe Del Grasso said today that he stands by the deal. It's my job now to prove to you that uh, you were wrong. And, and that this was really the right course of action and that it's actually going to make your job better and you're going to have a chance uh, at bonus money if you um, uh, meet certain requirements. I think it's going to be great. This deal relies on millions of dollars from the Facebook grant money to fund merit raises and bonuses, something which could make similar agreements in other districts that are not so well endowed a little more difficult. It is rare that you'll find a governor to show up to celebrate the signing of a union contract. But it's an indication of how significant this deal is that there were so many people here willing to take part of the credit for it. In Newark, I'm David Cruz, NJ Today. Newark's Mayor Cory Booker says he now needs some more time to decide whether or not he is going to run for governor. A lot of Democrats see him as their best bet to beat Governor Christie next year. And he was expected to make a decision by mid-December, according to the Star-Ledger. But that was before Hurricane Sandy. And now Mayor Booker says, well, he's told WBGO Radio that this storm has forced him to push back his timeline. We got word today that Vice President Biden will be touring the storm damage in New Jersey on Sunday. Two members of the president's cabinet were in Middletown today talking about our recovery efforts. And our senior correspondent, Desiree Taylor, was there.
It may be difficult to see much progress in some storm-ravaged areas of the state, but U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano you know, says federal assistance is here and making a difference for New Jersey residents affected by Superstorm Sandy. As of today, more than 210,000 New Jersey res residents have registered for assistance. More than $186 million uh, already has been uh, awarded for individual assistance. It's out on the street. Napolitano was joined by HUD Secretary Sean Donovan and New Jersey's U.S. Senators Frank Lautenberg and Bob Menendez. Their message, register with FEMA whether you need short or long-term assistance. We have families that are going to be out for a long rebuilding process where homes have been completely destroyed. And our experience is that the, a, a small group, but some families, it will take years. And in that case, we need to make sure, one, that they have a decent place to stay uh, for that period. And two, we're getting them certainty about their options as quickly as possible, and then that they have support in being able to rebuild. But there are some hurricane victims who say they are not getting the help they need from FEMA. Among them, homeowners who have vacation homes that have been damaged, and renters who had been living in garden or basement apartments. FEMA has to look at this issue in a more, you know, uh, diverse way. The whole country is not, uh, housing stock is not devised the same way. And so in places like Hoboken, where garden apartments are not just basement apartments, sometimes they're near level, uh, ground level, but for FEMA standards, they're not, we're going to have to get a broader definition of who is eligible. And if not, we're going to be seeking legislative remedies towards it. Senator Lautenberg says he and Senator Menendez have already reached out to President Obama and their colleagues in the Senate to make sure New Jersey gets the federal funding it needs to rebuild. We will rebuild this state of ours, and I would tell you this, and I know that it's been recognized along the way. We may have had an occasional political difference here, surprisingly, uh, but we've come together, and I was so pleased to see uh, the governor and the president and all of us working uh, uh, together to get the job done. So far, there are 25 disaster recovery centers in New Jersey covering every county in the state. Federal officials say FEMA could be here for months or years, however long it takes to help people recover and rebuild. For NJ Today, I'm Desiree Taylor in Middletown. Help appears to be on the way for New Jersey's battered fishing industry. The U.S. Commerce Department declaring a federal fisheries resource disaster for New York and New Jersey. Senator Frank Lautenberg had requested emergency funding to help the Garden State's 2,000 commercial fishermen, and this essentially clears the way for Congress to do that. The state senator, Michael Dougherty, wants to eliminate beach fees at towns on the shore that get state or federal disaster relief. Dougherty says taxpayers should have free access to the beaches that they are using their tax dollars to help rebuild. Cracking down on looters, that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop is Jersey City where 41 incidents of looting were reported after Hurricane Sandy knocked out power for four days. Police say the looters cleaned out some stores. They've already made 35 arrests, and they are looking for more suspects. Our next stop is Westwood, where the school superintendent, Jeffrey Zoller, is under fire for taking home a district-owned truck and power generator for Hurricane Sandy and then taking off on vacation and leaving them there. Zoller apologized at last night's school board meeting, but the board president tells us this is the latest in a series of problems, and Zoller's fate will be decided next month. Our final stop is Camden, where Rowan University is getting a $5 million grant from the state. The money's been earmarked for years, just waiting for Rowan to come up with a plan, and now it has one, converting an old bank building into classrooms. And that's your Garden State Express for Friday, the 16th of November. Today's business segment is made possible by PNC Bank, working to help you achieve your business and personal financial goals. PNC, a proud sponsor of NJTV and online at PNC.com. Back once again, Attorney General Jeff Chiesa has some advice tonight for New Jerseyans who are looking to help victims of Hurricane Sandy. Before you give money to any charity, make sure it is registered with the Division of Consumer Affairs. Officials say only one storm charity has in fact done that now since the hurricane. That's the Hurricane Sandy New Jersey Relief Fund, the one that's organized by New Jersey's First Lady Mary Pat Christie. A lot of people are still hurting out there. So many people lost so much. And as our Lauren Wanko tells us now, if you want proof, pay a visit to a food bank.
This is the busiest that this particular food bank uh, has ever been um, since its creation. The Food Bank of Monmouth and Ocean Counties is operating on overdrive. Since Sandy hit, they've distributed enough food to make 450,000 meals. And that is well over twice as much food as we're normally uh, distributing during this time of year. I don't think anyone can picture this type of need. Um, and you have the perfect storm within the perfect storm. Uh, not only did we have uh, such a devastating hurricane, but you also have it on the heels uh, of an economic crisis and also right up against the, uh, the Thanksgiving and holiday season. During this time of year, the food bank typically has plenty of time to sort and distribute all the Thanksgiving fixings to their network of over 250 charities. But this year, their immediate focus was on disaster relief. The Thanksgiving turkeys are stored in a freezer here in the food bank of Monmouth and Ocean Counties. So far, they've received 12,000 turkeys. The executive director says since Sandy hit, that's nowhere near enough. One of the things that this crisis has uh, kind of left at our front door is that many of the folks who contribute and, and donate are also now showing up, but for a very different reason. They themselves need to fill up their cupboards. It's a sad reality food banks are now facing statewide. The Community Food Bank of New Jersey, which has branches in North and South Jersey, say they've distributed over 100,000 pounds of food a day since Sandy made landfall. Their struggle at this point is keeping up with the demand and preparing for the winter months. The, the need was high prior to the storm, and now that more people are homeless um, and possibly without jobs, the, the need will, is definitely higher than it was previously. We asked Senator Jennifer Beck, who volunteers at the food bank, if legislatures will consider increasing state aid to New Jersey's food banks. No, no doubt about it. I mean, it is on it is on our governor's radar screen. It's certainly on mine and my colleagues. Um, we recognize the unprecedented nature of this challenge, and um, we're very focused on it. Rodriguez says after the turkey is carved and the holidays are over, the food bank still anticipates feeding more people than ever before. And their greatest challenge going forward is having the resources to meet those needs. In Neptune, I'm Lauren Wonko for NJ Today. One of America's most famous food companies is going out of business, and hundreds of New Jerseyans, as a result, are losing their jobs. Hostess Foods, the makers of Twinkies and Wonder Bread, among other products, it says a labor dispute has forced the company into liquidation. That means the end for the bakeries in Wayne and across the river in Philadelphia and all of those local outlet stores, unless a buyer can be found. New Jersey's mayors are now being urged to sell Congress on a new budget plan. Joining us now from the State House is the Executive Director of the League of Municipalities, Bill Dressel. Bill, good of you to join us once again. What, uh, I understand a letter's been sent out to the mayors. What are you encouraging them to do precisely? Well, Michael, you're absolutely right. Uh, in August 2011, Congress and the president uh, reached an agreement on in increasing the debt ceiling. And as part of that, uh, they're, uh, they, they set up uh, a $1.2 trillion uh, uh, cut in the, in, the, in the budget deficit, which begins uh, on January 2nd. Uh, of uh, 2013, where $109 billion is to be cut, in mostly in discretionary funding. And so we're urging the, the mayors throughout the state to, con to contact the, the president and the members of Congress and urge them to make these cuts in a responsible fashion, to look at everything, not just discretionary funding, and to maintain the tax exemption on municipal bonds. Talk to me about what you're hearing from, from your member mayors out there in the wake of this hurricane. Have you ever heard anything like this after any? We had Irene last year. That was tough. But tell me about what you're hearing from them now. This storm surpasses Irene, the ice storms. This is the worst natural disaster in, in memory. I don't think any of us have been alive that have, have experienced this. And what the mayors are saying up and down the state, uh, over their urban, suburban, rural, north, south, east, west, they're all saying that that their residents and taxpayers are hurting and that they need assistance. And thank God that, that our governor, Governor Christie and President Obama, I think, uh, have really come together uh, in, in a way that I've never seen the, uh, the, the federal government and the state government come together to assist our communities. And I really, you know, my hat's off to the mayors and the local officials who have to deal with the human element. Yes. We, we took a hit on the dollars and cents. 
insurmountable, being calculated every day. But the human element, uh, how you deal with people who have lost everything, how you deal with the, and be sensitive to, to their needs is something that the mayors and governing body officials really need, you know, deserve a lot of credit because they're on the front lines each and every day, 24-7, dealing with that. And w they're in a lot of hurt, but well, I have well, to say. Bill, let me ask you about that because the governor has, has said that somebody's got to pay for a this damage somewhere and that some of these towns may end up having to do what the governor never imagined he'd have to say, may have to raise taxes. Are you, at this point, how likely do you consider that to be a possibility? Have you heard from, from the mayors, from the chief executives of these communities about their moving in that direction? I think we have to look at all revenue sources. I think that uh, the federal government, uh, quite frankly, through FEMA, we have to take a look at how much money is going to be returned. Uh, and I applaud the governor in holding up and giving the final bill to FEMA until all the costs can, can be calculated because they're going to be insurmountable. Uh, but I think we have to look at all options. I think that, you know, this was a statewide emergency. New, New Jersey, you know, was ground zero for Hurricane Sandy. So you could argue that we have a state responsibility to provide dollars, but we also have to look to, to the local property tax. In New Jersey, the only source of revenue we have to pay for the broad spectrum of programs and services and disasters is the property tax. But I would say that we also have to look at a broader base and possibly the, the state as well for additional funding. The governor has done well in providing flexibility and permitting, have been, has been doing, uh, providing assistance by the state. But I think after this is settled, after we've looked at FEMA reimbursement, after we look at the property tax and what, you know, what, uh, you know how, how that is going to fare, given the fact that some houses have been lost and rateable dollars will never be returned, I think we have to look at other options, including the state budget. Bill, have to leave it there. Appreciate it. Bill Dressel, thank you so much for coming on, sir. Thank you, Michael. question for you. Can art help to bail out Atlantic City? They have just kicked off a five-year, $13 million program called Artlantic, which aims to do just that. We have a report now from Eric Schultz at State of the Arts. The first two sites of Atlantic City's new public art initiative were unveiled last week, just 10 days after Hurricane Sandy slammed into the Jersey Shore. While much of the city was flooded, both installations came through the storm unscathed. Organizers decided to go ahead with the unveiling as a way of bringing the community together and honoring the first responders to the hurricane. One site features an illusionistic geometric work by California artist John Roloff. It doubles as a performance space. Here's the Atlantic City Ballet. The other installation is on a seven-acre lot, vacant since the Sands Hotel was demolished in 2007. Lance Fung is the project curator. I came up with the initial very um, naive, simplistic drawing looking at the history of the steel pier here in Atlantic City. And so the form evolved around the form of a roller coaster. It's these two mounds hollowed out out of grass. And in the middle of those two um, exhibition spaces, open air to Mother Nature, are three artists. All three are internationally acclaimed artists. Kiki Smith and Robert Berry have roots in New Jersey. Russian-born artists Ilya and Emilia Kabakov, now based in Long Island, have created installations in 35 countries around the world. But this is their first in the United States. For us, it was important to not only bring visitors, because speaking really to the economics, it absolutely is a tourism draw, but it also is something that the residents need. And what I saw was it was a need of public meeting spaces, and it was a need for green spaces. And that's good for everyone. It's good for business, it's good for economic development, it's good for locals, it's good for artists. 
For NJ Today, this is Eric Schultz with State of the Arts. Governor Christie takes issue with Mitt Romney. Cory Booker says he needs some more time. And what about that fiscal cliff? Time now for our political roundtable with Republican strategist Bill Spadia, and Democratic strategist Bill Pascrell III. Gentlemen, it's good of you to come on in. Uh, sure. Were you surprised at all when the governor, who talked about himself being the first governor and the strongest supporter of Mitt Romney, broke with him on this? Well, I, you know, nothing surprises me. After an election is lost, and there's a lot of finger pointing going on, I, I, look, I, I think that, that there's a lot of talk about how the Republican Party has a demographic problem. And I've actually taken issue with that. And I think that, you know, when, when you look at what Mitt Romney said, I think part of what the governor's disagreement was is I think the governor disagrees with that. I mean, you look at his numbers in New Jersey, you look at some of these governors across the country, uh, Susanna Martinez and Nikki Haley and Bob McDonnell, uh, the Republican Party had a communication problem this time. We didn't get the vote out where we needed to. But and it's, unfortunately, it's, but it's Mitt Romney couldn't relate. It's a little bit of a violation of the yeah. old Reagan creed yeah. about not criticizing fellow Republicans. Uh, do, you, do, you think, do you think that the Republican Party is, at this point, searching to redefine itself, searching for its core, its center? Uh, Michael, I think that, uh, look, the election's over. Obama got more votes than Romney, and we can prognosticate all we want. Mm -hmm. But it's as simple as that. <laughs> look. Democrats picked up seats in the House, despite a horrible map. But when you have, I, I got all the math. But you, when you have Republicans now starting to look at the guy who was their standard bearer and say, hey, you're way off on that, buddy. Listen, we've been telling the American people, the Republicans weren't listening, how bad a candidate Romney was. Now you're seeing it <laughs> firsthand. What he said yesterday about gifts to minorities and that being the reason Obama won is outlandish. And I give credit to Governor Jindal. For stepping up, he was the and first one out of the box. He was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I also give credit to our go our governor. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a yellow dog Democrat, <laughs> but he's our governor. <laughs> he handled himself with incredible distinction the last couple of weeks in very trying times. He didn't politicize it, but you know, all of us, the talking heads, mm -hmm. we're all trying to figure out why he did what he did. You know what he did? What he said he did. His mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. The Republican well, Party is remember. scapegoating now because but, but, well, the problems you know, I mean, of the but, world. But actually, I think it's the opposite. I think it's that the Governor Christie is looking at Mitt Romney and saying, you know, you, you're, you're, you're pointing the finger away from yourself. I think there were a lot of problems, but let's face it, the positioning now for 2016, it's happening now. I mean, look, it started on Wednesday after the election. The happiest so. man in the world <laughs> is Karl Rove. Because Mitt Romney is giving Karl Rove, you know, <laughs> deniability from what happened. Four hundred million dollars and not one win, not one victory. Come on! At least he you was get consistent. A return on investment That's in bad economic well, times. You know, but the Romney campaign really didn't even get off the ground until the first yeah. debate on October third. Well, so the message let's, never let's really got out. Let's talk about there. some other possibility yeah. here. Yeah. We hear from the mayor of Newark. Mm. Yep. He was supposed to make a decision about running for governor mm. soon. Right. Now he says he needs more time. Yeah. What do you think that's all about? Uh, I, well, I don't think he has any intention of running for governor. I, I think that, that Cory Booker's in a position where he's got some, some fracturing inside of Newark, inside the politics there, that, that I think it potentially jeopardizes his own reelection. He wants to keep the conversation about a statewide run. My gut tells me he's waiting for that Lautenberg seat in 2014. Bill? I think Cory Booker, and I'll quote a great fellow Democrat from Union County, Ray Lesnack. Cory Booker's a rock star, whether you like it or not. And so is Governor Christie. And I think it'd be wonderful to have two rock stars go against each other. But the do you think it's going to happen? Is, but but uh, let me answer Would your you original like question. That? Well, I got two others while you're thinking about that one. <laughs> oh, so <I> <laughs> Would you, would you Let's like get to off from we've, had, we've had Loretta Weinberg, Senator Weinberg, mm -hmm. say she'd like to see him in the race. Would you like to see him in the race, Cory Booker against Chris? I think he's an outstanding mayor. I think he'd be a great standard bearer for her. And I would love to see see somebody your first choice? strong like him. I, you know what? At the end of the Can day, Michael, I'm a Christy? public affairs consultant. Yeah. i got to work with whoever works. you got a lot of first choices. i got a lot of first choices. <laughs> who, who he happens to be one. Uh -huh. And throw another name at me. I think okay. they'd be yeah, great, but, too. But none but, of them can be Christie in 2013. Wait a second. You think Time so? Time out. Well, I don't think Time so. Time out. Yeah. I am not with the, the popular yeah. culture who believes today because the governor has exceedingly great numbers. Listen, Chris Christie, 
I've said this on this show, is the best politician this state has seen in four generations, back to the 1960s. Only but. But, but, he is not undefeatable. Nobody he is, is not yeah. rock Nobody solid. is. Just but, ask but Bill Clinton he, whether look, he across thought. The aisle, Bill, less word. Across the aisle, Chris Christie has great appeal. He handled himself well during the hurricane. I agree. Look, he overcomes uh, that gap and, of 800,000 know, you know votes. what's coming at us? Yeah. The fiscal cliff. But it's we'll coming. have to wait, because it'll still be there when we come back next week. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Finally, before we go, we got word late today that the blue laws are back in effect in Bergen County. Governor Christie has verbally committed to lifting his suspension, and the county executive, Kathy Donovan, says that's good enough for her, which means, once again, no shopping on Sunday in Bergen County. That does it for us. Coming up next week, a conversation with the First Lady of New Jersey, Mary Pat Christie, her efforts to help hurricane victims, the president of PSE and G on the company's response to Sandy, and we'll talk to the heads of Toys R Us about the holiday shopping season. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. We will see you back here once again on Monday. Till then, I'm Mike Schneider. Good night. The New Jersey Association of Realtors knows that owning a home can be your most valuable asset. That's why we take pride in working diligently to protect its value. We know that real estate helps to fuel the engines of our local, state, and national economies. From protecting consumers' interests in our state's capital to working in various neighborhoods throughout New Jersey, our more than 40,000 realtors are dedicated to the communities in which they live and serve. More about us is online at njar.com. Next on NJTV, BBC World News. Unlock the mystery.